You're listening to episode 108 of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. On this week's show, back by popular demand, is my guest from show 88, Mona Dolgov. Mona is a nutritionist, cookbook author, and publisher with a lifelong passion for creating kitchen comfort and simple, healthier habits through her delicious recipes. Her new cookbook, Satisfy, is about to hit bookstores and your favorite online retailers, including Amazon. And she is here today to help us healthify the holidays. Yay, that's our topic today. And we have got lots in store for you. We're going to tell you how to healthify gravy, sweet potato casserole, appetizers. She's got a peanut butter dip to die for that you will definitely want to try on Thanksgiving. Time to shake things up. And we have desserts mini cheesecakes, personal pumpkin pies. Oh my. We're going to tell you how to make the best Brussels sprouts ever in the air fryer. And wait for it. If you are an air fryer fan or an air fryer wannabe like me, we are (laughs) giving away a Philips Premium XXL air fryer with fat removal technology, retail value of $300. And we're giving that away to one lucky U.S. winner. Yep, you heard that right, an air fryer. This is huge, you guys. Plus, Mona is going to give her special 20% discount code on any Philips air fryer. So you just want to go grab your pen and paper because we are going to just offer this on the podcast and not even in the show notes. So you're going to want to write things down. There are even more goodies in store on the show because we have a second listener who's going to win a copy of Mona's new book, Satisfy, delicious, healthy, and fulfilling meals for 500 calories or less. And Mona's kind of in the background standing by, so you might hear her laughing and smiling. Well, you can hear her smiling. You can see her smiling if you're watching this on Facebook. You can hear her smile if if you're listening to the podcast. So shh, be quiet, Mona. Okay, so we have the giveaway for the air fryer. We have the giveaway for Satisfy. And you're going to want to head to the show notes so you can enter for a chance to win one of these two giveaways. So we are episode 108. I am going to run this giveaway through November 22nd. It's such an epic giveaway. I think it's like the biggest we've ever done on the podcast. So I'm going to give it an extra week and we're going to run that through the 22nd. Okay. Just when you thought you had heard it all, I got to tell you something else. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this on the show. But Mona and I are teaming up to give you guys a Zoom, an exclusive Zoom hands-on cook-along cooking class, a two-parter we're doing on November 16th and 18th. It's called Healthify the Holidays. On November 16th, you can sign up for our Healthify the Holidays appetizer edition. If you want to sign up for both on the 18th, we're doing Healthify the Holidays sensational side dishes. So like I said, you can sign up for one class. It's cheaper if you sign up for two. And we're going to put some info in the show notes so you can check out how we're going to be you know, doing those cooking classes on Zoom. And we all know how to do Zoom these days, right? So we're going to talk about that a little bit more on the show. Okay. A few friendly reminders. If you love the show, tell a friend about it. Post a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. Follow me at lizeshealthytable.com for all of the great things we talk about today. And you know, I'm on Instagram at Liz Weiss. And now it is time to welcome Mona back to the podcast with her satisfying and healthifying ideas for the holidays. Welcome to the show, Mona. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's so fun. <laughs> You're sitting there so patiently when I am talking. <laughs> I can see you holding up the book. It's very exciting. You were on back in, gosh, well, show 88. I can't even remember what month it is, but the January. book was January. So you're, you have a much better memory than I do. And so the book is just about to hit bookstores and Amazon and other online retailers. 
Uh, people can order it now, certainly. But just tell everybody, you know, we, you gave us the whole Mona backstory. So I want people to go back and listen to show 88. However, you've got some updates. So tell us a little bit about Mona World right now. <laughs> So I'm very excited to be launching Satisfy. It's coming out on November 9th. So you can pre-order it now. The best part, you could have it for the holidays. I actually have a friend of mine who just bought six of the books just to give it away to a girl's weekend. And she made one of my recipes, a little spice mix and gave that away with it too. And I thought that was just a cool idea. So I'm excited about my book. I'm doing a lot of online Zoom cooking classes now because my philosophy is you just don't write a book. And it sits on a bookshelf and collects dust. I really want whatever I publish, whatever I create, really to become interactive and to really someone to use it every week and plan their meals because that's what it's all about. Why do I waste my time writing a book if someone's not going to use it every week, right? So I'm doing that. I'm actually working on my second book, and that's going to be ready in June of 2022. It's a little bit of a sequel to Satisfy. It's very exciting. I'm excited about that. And I'm working on a healthy living reboot that I'm doing with a good friend of mine, Lisa Lutan, next week. And that's also, this book is also great for that to kind of saying, okay, I want to kind of modify my life so that when I go into the holidays, why not change? I just want to transform myself. This is also an easy book to kind of be able to do that as well. So it's almost like a brand and it's almost like a life, like a satisfying life. That's my whole vision of really what I want to do. I love it. A satisfying life. Now, your life has taken a bit of a turn. Besides the fact that you're so busy with the book, you also sold your house in the suburbs and you moved to the big city of Boston (laughs) and tell everybody where you're living. Because to me, this is like the coolest part of the Mona life these days. Like, where are you? This is cool. Well, I live almost in the next building over from Liz, which is so exciting. (laughs) We are now a new walking buddy. I live in the Boston Seaport, just like you. And I love this apartment life. It's so much fun. It's like, I feel, I don't know about you, Liz, but I feel about 20, 30 years younger. I just love bopping around the city and having access to everything, seeing you all the time now. And it's just really been a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. My kids it's so funny, Rachel and Scotty, they just want to come visit us all, the, visit Doug and I all the time because we're the cool hip parents because we <laughs> live in the city. I don't know how your kids feel too. <laughs> they, oh no, they do love coming here. And it's funny because Mona and I used to get together. We go way back and we used to get together once in a blue moon and we'd meet somewhere in the suburbs for lunch. Now I can text you and say, hey, I'm going to walk down and get some coffee down the street. You want to go? So it's like, it's pretty cool. So of course, I'm a little bit, you know, laid up with the knee injury, which I've talked about on the podcast, you know, the MCL, the ACL, but listen, I'm getting better. So life, life goes on, but we've got the holidays coming up and, you know, people will say, wait a minute, you want to healthify the holidays? Aren't we just supposed to eat whatever the heck we want? Leave me alone. I just want to splurge. Yeah. We're saying eat what you want, splurge, but you can make a few tiny tweaks to make the holidays a little bit healthier so that you don't feel like so stuffed and so uncomfortable, but you feel vibrant and alive and you can socialize with family and you're going to make recipes that are so darn delicious. So we're going to get into a few tips for you guys today, how to healthify the holidays. So my philosophy really is eat what you love, but make it a little lighter. You know, if I'm going to make gravy, for example, for years at Thanksgiving, my job, well, Tim's job is to carve the turkey. My job, of course, is to do all the vegetable side dishes, and I do healthify them. And then my job is also to make the gravy. I I have this really cool thing. It's a gravy separator so that when the bird comes out of the oven, you pour the pan drippings into this gravy separator, and it separates out those beautiful, rich juices from the fat. Now, I don't mind a little fat, but the fat in the gravy kind of like, it makes it heavy and unpleasant. I want to taste those pan juices because you've cooked veggies in with that bird. And so it's just this beautiful liquid that comes out. And then with that, the pan juices, I will then add those to a saucepan. And then I'll add a a cold mixture of water and a little cornstarch or flour. And then as that gravy is kind of bubbling on a little bit of a simmer, I add those, that liquid, that flour or cornstarch water mixture very slowly. And I just mix it till it thickens up. I don't add too much. It'll end up like paste. I just add a little bit and it just gets glossy and delicious and yummy. And so that's kind of how I healthify gravy. And you know what? When I do it, it makes the gravy taste better. It makes it look better. It's such a beautiful accompaniment. And who does not love turkey with gravy? Without gravy, you got nothing. So that's kind of my philosophy. And and I'm sort of curious, Mona, if you share that, like what's kind of your philosophy on healthifying the holidays and then kick us off with a really great tip for how you do it. 
I really like, I'm with you, Liz. I really like lightening things up. And there's so many ways to do it. And also I'm a big, as you know, I wrote the perfect portion cookbook and now it's satisfy. I'm always cognizant of just how much you eat. And so as I agree with you, what you love during the holidays, because there are those special dishes, you know, I only make, and I I wonder why I do that. I only make them on Thanksgiving. And there's some of my favorite dishes, but actually I didn't because I made you that butternut squash soup when your leg, when your knee was bad, when yes. it was knocked up and I brought it over. So that's another advantage about being a great neighbor. I was testing out a new recipe, it was a new so version of it. Good. So I really think it's important to just lighten it up. And speaking of your favorite gravy, my one of my favorite Thanksgiving things is making the soup. I love making butternut squash soup. And this is kind of symbolic of the less heaviness in that I don't add heavy cream. I don't add ex- any butter. I just take the beauty of the butternut squash and ways in which that I kind of make it taste even better is that I roast my butternut squash before I boil it. And by doing that, it caramelizes and you get the sweetness of the butternut squash. Then I saute like apples and onions and a little bit of olive oil, healthy fat, not a lot, just enough. And if I need a little extra liquid, I do what I call steam saute. I might add a little bit of extra broth into that pan if I feel that it's a little bit dry and it sautés it just as beautifully. And that's a little trick in that you're not adding so much oil. You're just adding a little bit of oil, maybe a little bit of of broth just to kind of sauté and soften those vegetables. Then what I do is then I add some broth and I throw, I whiz it into the blender. I add a whole bunch of different spices. And what's really cool about butternut squash soup is that you can make it all these different ways. So if you want to make it, I call it the traditional way, I would add some ginger or some cinnamon, like your fall butternut squash soup, and then serve it with some sliced apples. But let's say I want to make a Mediterranean butternut squash soup. What I might do instead is add some sage and then sprinkle it with some Parmesan cheese on top. And then it provides a whole new flavor profile. If I want to make an Asian version of butternut squash soup, I may use a little extra curry and make a like a curry butternut squash soup. So based upon what I feel like doing or what I, my company who's coming over is that that's like a basic recipe, basically butternut squash, chicken broth, some onions. I, I do like adding apples and then figure out how you want to spice it up. And it's calorie free because you're adding all these fun dashes. And it's just making it a wonderful new surprise every Thanksgiving. So I'm trying to decide this year how I want to do it. I love it. I love it. And Mm -hmm. I'm kind of planning Thanksgiving this year. I've just started thinking about it because we're doing this two-part cooking series, Healthify the Holidays. Like I said in the intro, head to the show notes because we'll give you some info there and how you can sign up. But basically, 6 p.m. Eastern on the 16th of November, we're doing appetizers. On the 18th at 6 p.m. Eastern, we're doing side dishes. And that's really like where it's at, you know, when it comes to to the holidays. And the way it works, you guys, is that it's going to be a one hour cook along where you get to cook three recipes, three to four recipes each week with us. And you're going to get lots of ideas. And so you definitely want to be, you know, signing up for that. And so when we're doing our appetizer class, we've got various appetizers. I'm going to make a roasted carrot hummus. And This is a great tip for healthifying the holidays. You know, you've got your appetizers. My sister always makes this brie that she wraps in phyllo dough and she bakes it and it's gooey and it's like so decadent. And I love it. You want to, you know, try to have lots of veggies and some fruit sliced up. I think apples with that would be great. You know, have that on the side. But this hummus that we're going to make in the class is, you know, you roast up carrots with some seasoning. You then puree those with white beans, or you could use chickpeas and you make a homemade hummus. Technically hummus is made with chickpeas, but you make this homemade hummus and then you serve it with tons of veggies on the side. And that's a way to healthify it because you've added some beautiful roasted veggies right in with those beans. You've got this like, you know, it's like a dynamic duo of good nutrition because you've got the beans, you've got the veggies, and then you add the usual garlic, olive oil, lemon juice. You can add some lemon zest to that. So it's all about, you know, to me, those little tweaks. So at appetizer time, you know, we're literally just making those little changes and it's so easy. So I talked in the intro about this peanut butter dip and people might be thinking, why would you serve a peanut butter dip at the holidays? Why are you including that in your demo on the 16th? So just give us a little backstory, the little, uh, give us the skinny on the peanut butter dip. Okay. Well, it's not really a peanut butter dip. It's a peanut sauce. So okay. it kind of gives it a little bit of a different positioning. 
So this peanut sauce, so in my book, Satisfied, which I really like, I have within each dish a whole bunch of different sauces. So you could take a sauce from one recipe and use it for another occasion, as an example, this peanut sauce. So this peanut sauce is actually in one of my recipes in my book called egg roll in a bowl. And basically think of like the insides of an egg roll, and then you add this peanut sauce at the end. But I use this peanut sauce for every appetizer occasion that I possibly can, because it's just so rich and so delicious and so good. And I love making almost like an Asian charcuterie board. So think about like vegetables. It might be snap peas. I may take cucumbers and cut them like julienne strips. So it looks like almost like the inside of a a roll, like a sushi roll. And then I may use like carrot coins, some broccoli and make it really, really pretty, some radishes, or I may even take cabbage and make it into little wedges. And then I make this peanut sauce. And what's great about this peanut sauce, every time I make it, everybody's like, oh my God, Mona, I have to make it again. It's really easy, really simple. And it's really, really easy. It's a combination of, you take a tablespoon of, I love using measures that people remember. Think of the number one. So it's a tablespoon of peanut butter, a tablespoon of coconut aminos. What the heck is coconut aminos? We talk about lightening things up. Sodium. Sodium is really important as far as lowering your sodium during you know any type of big meal or whatever. Coconut aminos is really awesome. Here's a bottle of it if you oh, want to see. And what right. it is, it's a, it's a version of the flavoring of soy sauce. It's sourced from coconuts. It's gluten-free. And it has about a third of the sodium of even low sodium soy sauce. So I use this all the time as a sub in for soy sauce. So anyway, it's a tablespoon of natural peanut butter, a tablespoon of coconut aminos, a teaspoon of sesame oil that night gives it that really rich flavor, a teaspoon of ginger, a teaspoon of rice vinegar, and a teaspoon of honey. You mix that all together and you get this rich dip. So let's say you want it a little thinner. What do you add? You don't add more oil. You just add a little bit of water and it just, it doesn't dilute the flavor at all. It just gives it richer. So you kind of decide within your realm, how thick or thin you want that sauce. And I use it as like a, in a, put in a, like a little dip bowl. I always use snap peas. I use water chestnuts, the cucumbers, the cabbage, little wedges, radishes. It's just awesome. And everybody always loves the peanut sauce. And whenever you make a batch, triple it because it's just going to. You're going to lick the bowl. (laughs) So I love this. Well, please, no double dipping, okay? And then I have a funny double (laughs) dipping story for you. But so it's a sauce, but you can serve it as a dip at Thanksgiving or at any holiday or any celebratory occasion or every night at dinner. You know, you can, and I love how you turn this into like a snack board or a charcuterie board with that vibe of more Asian inspired vegetables. I love that. So I have to just tell you this quick story. I, my intern, Lin Fi Chen, she's from Shanghai. She was my intern sort of through COVID and we would cook together and work together via Zoom. It's all about Zoom, right? Right. And I finally got to meet her. She came over a few months ago because she's in Boston and she came over and had dinner with me and with Tim and Simon actually came back from college that night. She got to meet Simon. That was so cool. But when we were having appetizers before we had dinner, she, we were eating chips and just some salsa and some hummus. And I had some veggies out and she bit into her chip and she, you know, she dipped it in the hummus. She took a bite and then she dipped it in the salsa, the same chip. And of course I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, double dip. Co- yeah, COVID's still going on. There's like, she double dipped. I don't know if you remember the Seinfeld episode. Did you just double dip? <laughs> and I said to her, Lynn Fee, did you just double dip? And she looked at me like, what the heck are you talking about? And so we had this whole conversation on double dipping and she of course was horrified. She ended up writing this beautiful essay about it, which I'm going to publish on my blog. But in China, culturally, it's all about family, right? You sit around and you have chopsticks and you are eating from this bowl and that bowl. It's a feast and you're serving yourself. And there's a lot of double dipping going on with the chopsticks themselves. So culturally for her, this is very normal way to eat and share an appetizer or share a meal. And so interestingly, because of COVID in China, the government itself is trying to discourage citizens from double dipping now because of COVID, because of cross-contamination. And they're saying, listen, it's not going to diminish your love and your enjoyment of that meal with your family and friends, but it will keep your loved ones safer. 
So culturally, they're shifting away from double dipping. And it's just become this whole thing with us. And she's just, I love this girl so much. We've just, you know, developed a nice relationship over the the past year and a half. But anyway, that's the double dipping story. So you can serve Mona's peanut butter dip, but darn it, don't don't be double double dipping. (laughs) Don't double dip. So we've got all of our appetizers. Before we move on to some side dish inspiration, I know in our class, we're going to be doing a, an asparagus wrapped in turkey bacon. That's going to mm-hmm. be a good one. And then what's our other appetizer? See, now I'm spacing out. Let me grab my list across the way here. In our class, we also have appetizers. Okay, here we Oh, hello, cauliflower wings. Yes. It's so trendy right now. You know, chicken wings are one thing, but cauliflower wings, is that a recipe and satisfy as well? Yes, it is. It's uh, so don't give too much away. We want people signing up for the class, but yeah, I'm signing up for the book too. So um, (laughs) yeah, exactly. One one great thing about my book that I did, I I wrote it in the midst of when the throes of COVID and everybody wanted to make their meals kind of special at home. So I actually created a chapter called snack or taining because I just, and that cute, cute name. It's so cute. And of course it's cute. I, I think it's cute, <laughs> but it, it makes snacking more fun. And, and it kind of says, okay, I can snack and be good to myself, or I can really use this for entertaining for nauseous or whatever. And so I have a recipe and satisfy for buffalo cauliflower wings. And it's so easy to make, and you actually can make them in the oven or you can make them in the air fryer mm-hmm. and the air fryer makes it even Oh, unbelievable. I am so, I am a lover, air fryer ophile. I just love using the air fryer. <laughs> I think you're um, obsessed. <laughs> well, I am, but also my friends at Phillips have hired me too. I'm helping them out, create over a hundred recipes this year for the air fryer. And I've really gotten, the air fryer has become my best friend. I actually talk to it every day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, That's because you're lonely. Come visit me, no. more, Mona, so you don't have to talk to the air fryer. In I fact, know. give me an air fryer and I'll have someone to talk to as well. All right. We'll, we'll have a double date. Yes. But, anyway, but the air fryer is just so great for vegetables, especially, and for proteins as well, is that you get that crispiness. And what's great about it, you don't have to preheat your oven. So you basically save 15 or 20 minutes there. And then you add in your sauces or whatever, right? You know, you roast your your vegetables and you usually add your sauces at the end. But what's really great, it takes like a third to half the time than you would normally roast your vegetables in the fridge, in the fridge, in the oven. And what's so great about it is that they taste, they, you get that crispiness on the outside. I think they come out really more crispy from the air fryer than they do in the oven because I guess the shape of the air fryer provides this air circulation around it that just makes vegetables taste so, so good. But yes, mm. the cauliflower wings are in my cookbook and they're buffalo cauliflower wings. But let's say you don't like buffalo sauce, you don't like spicy, spicy. So if you want to make them teriyaki, you can by you know either making your own teriyaki sauce or adding a little bit of some low sodium teriyaki sauce. You can make them with barbecue sauce and have barbecue cauliflower wings. So, or you can make a whole bunch and make in different ways and even have dipping sauces. So, but just plain cauliflower and then everybody can kind of have their own pick, which is kind Mm. of fun too. So we're talking about the air fryer here, and this is not an air fryer show and you'll come back on certainly when your new book is out, but we are giving away an air fryer. And I did tease at the beginning that you're going to share with my listeners a 20% discount code on yes. Phillips Air Fryers. So give us the website, give us the code, and just tell us a little bit about the giveaway and this XXL Air Fryer. Okay. So if you go on www.phillips.com and you can use my personal discount code that I only give to special people like my like our listeners. <laughs> okay. It's Mona, M-O-N-A, my name, Mona20. That's it. And if you use that in the promo code and as a promo code, you'll get 20% off an air fryer. And we are giving away, I think, the best air fryer in the universe. It's the Philips XXL air fryer with fat reduction technology. It's a big enough air fryer to really make a full meal, to make your appetizers, and it cooks things quickly. And the quality of of the meals are very, very consistent as far as making everything's ready at the same time. And it's just an awesome, easy to clean. It's dishwasher safe. How great is that? Right. And I just love it. I really, I use my air fryer literally every day, Liz, for all different kinds of things. You know, you can even hard boil an egg in an air fryer. How cool is that? 
And is it yeah. easy to peel if you hard boil it in the air? Fryer? Oh yeah. Yeah. No water. You just throw those eggs into the air fryer, into that magic drawer, mm -hmm. set it at 250 degrees for 15 minutes. Boom. After 15 minutes, you throw the eggs in the ice water, peel them done. And that's when it. you, when you throw great. them in the air fryer, don't be too aggressive people. Cause we don't need no. eggs breaking all over the kitchen. <laughs> oh, you know what? I know what you mean. <laughs> I can remember years ago, Tim, when we lived in Lexington, the boys must have been young. He had just bought a gallon of milk, like you know, with the young boys, <laughs> big gallon of milk, puts it in the fridge. It falls out of his hand. It opens up. And this milk, if I can tell you, spills absolutely everywhere. A gallon of milk. He did this with laundry detergent once too. And that was really hard to clean. And you know, when you're a mom with two young kids, you don't have time for this. This is nonsense, right? Oh my gosh. Was I mad at that guy? So yeah, be careful. He did. You know what he did yes, once definitely. too? He used to make orange juice all the time from concentrate. This is before we had kids. And he had taken this thing out of the freezer, the, the container, and, yeah. he had, and he had the can, right? And he'd remove the lid, but he left the lid on. Well, when I came into the kitchen in the morning, I saw it. I'm like, oh, I'll just grab it and, you know, make the orange juice. I grab it aggressively. The lid had already been removed. This concentrate flies literally everywhere. And that was another like multiple days of cleanup. Like, why, does oh, guys, no. why do they do these things to us? <laughs> Has Doug ever done something like that to you, Mona? Or is he just the perfect husband? I think he's the perfect husband. Oh, my darling. Oh, good answer. I hope he's listening. <laughs> I'm sure he will be. <laughs> you better. He better tune in. Hey, let's talk a little bit about side dishes. How do we healthify? During our class, I'm going to demo my slightly sweet, sweet potato casserole that I top with this mm. yummy pecan mixture. And I always find that sweet potatoes are so sweet. When you roast them, it really brings out the beauty and the sweetness. So you don't have to add a lot of sugar. You can add a teeny, teeny bit or none at all. And then I add orange zest, some orange juice. I add, do I, oh, I add cinnamon. I add ginger, the usual kind of suspects at the holidays. And I make this crunchy topping. I don't use the mini marshmallows, although I do like mini marshmallows. And so I really do lighten up the sweet potato casserole. I can't wait to show everybody how to do it during the class. But that's just like one example where it's already naturally sweet. Let's bring out some other attributes, some other flavors. Let's add a crunchy topping. And so that's one very simple way to healthify a side dish. And for me, the holidays are all about the side dish. I also do a Brussels sprouts gratin, which is a little fussier, I will say. It's like this yummy, gooey Brussels sprouts recipe. And I'll put a link to it in the show notes. I'm not going to demo it during our class because when Mona and I were planning the class, you said to me, oh, I've got to do Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. And I said, I've always heard Brussels sprouts in the air fryer are epic. They're epic when you roast them in the oven, but we're going to do a Brussels sprouts recipe as well, which is going to be pretty fab. Yes. Yes. One of the things I like to make, I'm going to talk about the Brussels sprouts too, but I make a Mona salad every oh, Thanksgiving. Mona's, oh, I, I love a Mona salad. <laughs> Mona 20. Okay. Tell us about the Mona salad. <laughs> the Mona salad is that I never know what I'm going to do, but everybody who ever comes to my house either tell me to bring a Mona salad or to make a Mona salad. <laughs> and so what I like to do during the holidays, especially Thanksgiving is I like using both fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds of the season. So I always start with some greens and I always go with the darker greens because those are better for you. You know, you got your B vitamins and your lots of fiber. So I always start off with maybe mescaline greens. I'll add a little bit of arugula. That's kind of my bed. And then what I like to do, I like to combine warm vegetables, roasted vegetables with the cool raw vegetables, because I find I love the combination of the textures. And also it's a little trick as far as feeling a little bit fuller before you're eating the big meal. So it kind of helps from a mindfulness, portion mindfulness for the meal. So I usually roast up some butternut squash or Liz, you and I were talking about all our favorite squashes that we like to make during the holidays, like the honey nut squash that I got for you at Trader Joe's the other day love, or, the, love. or the delicata squash. I really like that. So I'll roast up some squash and cut it into little squares. And it's also pretty. And I'll sprinkle that into the salad. I'll add some, sometimes I'll air fry or I'll roast some zucchini. I may throw that into it. And then I put in some cucumbers. Usually I don't really use tomatoes during the holidays because I find it's a little acid. I like using more of the savory type of things. And then I'll for seeds or nuts, I'll put in a little, something a little bit lighter, like pumpkin seeds. I always find that that's really kind of a fun holiday thing and adds a little bit of that 
holiday flair or flavor to it. And then the other thing I like to add during uh, my Thanksgiving meal that makes it kind of pretty are pomegranate arrows. Mm-hmm. Have you ever added that to a salad? It's oh, so all the pretty. Time. I, pomegranate uh, arrows not only are beautiful to look at, they are so nutrient rich because you've got all these antioxidants, right? In those yeah. little arrows. Love those. Yeah. And I think the combination of those arrows and also, you know, the pumpkin seeds have a lot, a great source of magnesium too, which is awesome as well. But just think of like all the different colors. You've got the red pomegranate arrows, you've got the orange squashes, you've got your greens, and it makes it just so, so pretty. And then I said, okay, now I've got to go make a dressing. And I always make, that's one of my things as far as being mindful, make your own salad dressing. And I have about three or four different salad dressing ideas and satisfy, but I love making my own salad dressing. Do you make your own salad dressing? I only make my own. I used to buy the Paul Newman salad dressing. I love Paul Newman. Not personally, I don't know him, but I love the brand. I all through COVID just started making my own salad dressings. And I said, why the heck haven't I done this all along? I have a little tiny mason jar. I add all my ingredients. I shake it up and I'm done. And I talked about my salad dressing, my favorite go-to in my show um, with Corto Olive Oil on the Olive Oil 101 show. So if you guys haven't listened to that show, be sure to tune in. But what would be the salad dressing you would make during the holidays? I probably would make like a maple vinaigrette. So mm. nice and light. I'll use, you know, in my cookbook, I have the recipe for the balsamic vinaigrette. And I usually do halvesies, halvesies between the olive oil. And I always find a really good balsamic vinegar and a really good olive oil. So I'll have to try that quarto olive oil. And then I might put a little bit of Dijon mustard, a splash of maple syrup. I always like to buy a splurge on the maple syrup from Vermont. I love it. I put that in. And then I was thinking this year, I always have leftover canned pumpkin in my fridge because I like to make like a pumpkin dessert. As a thickener, I may add like a little canned pumpkin to the salad dressing. I think that might bring a little bit of nice added texture to it. Like, why not? And so I might try a little bit of that. And then I usually use more of my savory spices. In my cookbook, you know, I have a whole two-page spread of spice blends. So I have this great Mediterranean spice blend, which is a combination of oregano and basil and a garlic powder, a little crushed red pepper. I might add a little bit of my of my Mona Mediterranean spice blend into that, shake it up. I have my own little shaker. I have a little OXO shaker that has a spout mm. and I use that. And it's just, what I love about making salad dressing is like stays in your fridge for five days and it's it's just awesome. So mm. that's what I think I'm going to do this year for my salad. I love it. I love that idea of that salad, which is just filled with so much goodness. You know, you could also take, Brussels sprouts and slice them very thin and just add some of those shredded or shaved Brussels sprouts Mm. to that. So you're enhancing the greens that you've already added. You, you know, and I know you're going to tell us in a minute about those Brussels sprouts in the air fryer or the oven. But to me, Brussels sprouts are like the holiday workhorse of vegetables and they are so nutrient dense and they're so fun. Like I'll take Brussels sprouts, and I'll I'll trim off some of the icky leaves if there's any icky outer leaves, and I'll just slice off the the bottom stem just a little bit, but I keep it intact. I then slice it in half lengthwise, and then I'll take the flat side of the Brussels sprout and I'll put that on the cutting board, and that's how I will slice it into those thin half moon rounds, if you will, because or those strips, because if you're trying to slice this roly poly little ball, it can be really dangerous, and we're kind of rushing around the holidays, so we want to keep it safe, right? So you're going to have a flat side, cut side down as you cut it into these little slivers. And then that's this like fluffiness that goes right into a salad and and it's easy to chew. It's soft. It softens up. So I love to do that. But, you know, when it comes to roasting, I know you're going to demo it during the class that we do together, but why is the air fryer so magical for Brussels sprouts? I've heard for years, you've got to get the air fryer just for the Brussels sprouts. Well, first of all, it cooks them so quickly. Like when you make Brussels sprouts in the oven, how long does it usually take you? Oh, I'll I'll always set the timer on like 12 minutes, take it out, give it a toss, put it back in, give it a toss. I check it as I go. So it could be 30, 40 minutes, depending on the the temp of the oven. In the air fryer, it only takes 15 minutes. So that's really great. Plus you're not preheating the oven. So, So 15 minutes is 15 minutes. And all you do, and it's so simple. And so all you do is spray a little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper, put it in the air fryer. I'm not throwing, you put it in the air fryer basket. No, we're cut <laughs> I cut them in half. And the recipe that I have, actually, there's a great recipe on the Philips app 
that I actually created for Phillips. And so what you do for, you put them in the air fryer, cut them in half, spray them with a little olive oil, salt and pepper, 400 degrees for 12 minutes. And then I take them out. I mint, I have some minced garlic. I throw a little bit on top and then I put it, I lower the temperature to 375 because you don't want that garlic to burn and then cook it for another three minutes and then it's done. And then what you can do is it comes out really crispy. I don't know about you, but I love really crispy Brussels sprouts where it's kind of crunchy and not fully chub, but just like a little bit browned, oh, the best. And then when you're done, we talked about this last week during our coffee is really what about adding like apples or yeah, yeah, walnuts, nuts, yeah. pumpkin mm-hmm. seeds, balsamic glaze? Like how great would that be, mm-hmm. you know, to really make that dish really special, you know? I love it. I love all these ideas because especially, you know, when you're a dietitian, family will always say to you, your job, you know, is to bring the vegetables. And I talk about this all the time. And so for me, getting more veggie inspo is the way to go. My sister, Amy always makes the mashed potatoes. She's a butter cheese girl, you know, so that's kind of what she does. (laughs) When it comes to desserts though, we tend to really splurge and by dessert time, you're so full. So, you know, my strategy at Thanksgiving is just to take a few bites of everything because I know I want to eat everything. So I start off small, just a bite or two of everything because I love going up for seconds. My husband will always be like, why aren't you eating so little? I'm like, I'm not <sighs> eating little. I'm going up for seconds. My boys, it's almost comical. They, the, the plate is like, you know, these are young men, right? Piled high. But I also want to leave room for dessert. and we're not doing a class on how to healthify desserts. So let's share a few recipes now. But if you were healthifying dessert, Mona, I know on my website, I have these cute little mini cheesecakes that I do, and I make them in a muffin tin. I know in your book, you've got mini cheesecakes as well, and they just look so good. So tell us about those mini cheesecakes. Give us a little teaser on those. Okay. So for me, for dessert, I think you do healthify them by just making them little, by making them into bite form. As you know, I'm a big portion mindfulness gal. So by having pickup desserts versus big pies and big cakes, you automatically are being mindful because you're real, you, you can have one of those mini cheesecakes and it's so much lighter than trying to cut a piece of cheesecake that, you know, if it's coming from a massive, you know, cake that you might buy or make. So as far as my cheesecakes, I make them crustless. It's kind of a New York thing. I'm a New York girl. So New York cheesecakes are traditionally don't have crust. So it's a crustless cheesecake, almost like a cheesecake pudding. And I also, in my cheesecake, I make it a little extra special. I add some, you mentioned it before, some zest, some orange zest. And that just adds beautiful, aromatic, nice flavor to it. Less sugar, only a quarter cup sugar. I might use reduced fat cream cheese just to lower the fat a little bit. And then at the end, I take some dark chocolate. I melt it in the microwave and just do like a drizzle on top, a little cutie section on top. And they're so pretty. And it, it's just a great, great entertaining idea for the holidays as far as desserts are concerned. You know, it's really so, fun. So when you say cutie, a little Mandarin or Clementine, yeah. a little section yeah. of that. I love yeah. that idea because I do love having a bowl of Uh, halos, you know, on the table, because that way when family is popping in and out, maybe they're not going to eat as much in the day because they're saving up for dinner. Then you can grab one of those and they're so easy to peel. So I love having that. Or on my cheesecakes, I'll add berries. My husband is like a raspberry fanatic. So, you know, I might add some, are you a raspberry fanatic as well? Yes. Yes. Um, It's yeah. And my other cookbook, I have a mini cheesecake recipe. It's a little bit different than the one in Sazra from the perfect portion cookbook. And I macerate some raspberries with just a little bit of honey. And I, I spoon that on top and that's really Mm -hmm. delicious too, but you have to do it at the end because you don't want the raspberries to bleed into the cheesecake. So Mm -hmm. right before you serve it, you add the raspberries. That sounds good. If it was going to bleed into the cheesecake, that would be appropriate (laughs) at Halloween time, but certainly not. Right. (laughs) And you also have these, a little mini pumpkin desserts that you talk about in the book, which seem really appropriate for the holidays. Again, this is also like a pumpkin pie upside, I call it the upside down pumpkin pie. And that again, it doesn't have a crust. I actually make them in little mini ramekins. And so I create this pumpkin pie pudding made out of pure pumpkin. You always want to make sure you get the pure pumpkin and not the pumpkin pie filling because it has no, the pure pumpkin has no sugar. And it's a canned pumpkin. You get it at any supermarket. 
I added some eggs, a little bit of brown sugar, some cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice, and some vanilla and a pinch of salt. I put it into the ramekins. And then while they're baking in the oven, or actually you could probably make it in the air fryer too. Um, In the oven, it would be 350 at 40 minutes. I would think in the air fryer would probably be around 325 for about 20 minutes. I bet you can do it that way too. But anyway, while you're baking it, I add the topping. So it's almost the crust becomes the topping. And I love the topping because it's really nutrient rich. I combine some pumpkin seeds or pepitas and some pecans and a little brown sugar and cinnamon. And oh, the, the topping is just so great. And I just sprinkle it on top after I make my little pumpkin pie tart, almost like a little tart. And it's just so delicious. So, mm. so good. That sounds so good. And you say pecans. I lived in Georgia for years, so I call them pecans now. Uh, yeah, uh, I was ostracized. <laughs> you can't say pecans down south. You're gonna pecans. Be like, oh, the pecans. Yeah. The pecans. The pecans. <laughs> well, it's, it all sounds so good. I think we've given people so many ideas today. What a great teaser for how to help by the holidays. And, you know, we've got this giveaway going on. One lucky winner is going to win your book, Satisfy. A second lucky winner is going to win a Philips XXL air fryer. Amazing giveaway to very lucky US winners. And to enter that giveaway, you got to head over to the show notes from today's show, show 108, post a comment to enter. And when you post that comment, tell us, how you helpify the holidays. What's your favorite healthy-ish recipe? Or tell us if you love the air fryer, what's your favorite recipe or thing to make in the air fryer? So we want to get a lot of dialogue going on the show notes. And when you enter, you'll be, you know, entered for a chance to win. And I'm going to pick that winner at random on the 22nd of November. And do not forget Mona 20, which is 20% off code on all Phillips air fryers. So we've had a lot of, we got a lot of goodies today, people. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Mona, thank you so much. Anything else you want to share? One final little gem, kernel of wisdom for how we can add flavor and helpify the holidays at the same time? Well, I think from a, just from a self standpoint, don't stress, have fun with it, you know, and real, just be like mindful, you know, don't make so many different things. I mean, it's really savor on the, I really, I'm a big tradition person. I don't know if you are, Liz. I'm all about, I have my five recipes that I serve every year and it brings the whole family together. And, it, you know, my parents are both gone and it reminds me of them when I make them. And it's just so nice just bringing those traditions together. So bring in those traditions, have your family. Don't feel it's all your onus is just on you. If you're having a little bit of company, have them be part of the holiday prep and do it together because that's so much fun as well. And, you know, just take a breath and, eat up, you know, make some soup that might be kind of the soup and the salad are kind of my little tricks on really maintaining my fullness and not overdoing it on the holidays because I'm adding a lot of fiber and a lot of extra water into my body when I'm during the holidays. And, you know, have fun. Don't don't go crazy. Just have a fun holiday, you know? I love it. I love the have fun tip. And before I let you go, Mona, hold up the book so everybody can see it. And then we'll, I'll do a screen grab and we'll share this so people okay. can see in the show notes what this book looks like. <laughs> this is really a labor of love. And it's my gift to just be able to share just these recipes and tricks and tips just to make your lives easier. That's what it's all about. You know, here we go. I'm hugging. I'm hugging too. <laughs> Mona, where can people find you on the web and on social? Okay, very easy. It's my name, Mona Dolgov, M-O-N-A. The last name is D-O-L-G-O-V. So you can find me on www.monadolgov.com. My handle is at Mona Dolgov on Instagram. And to find my book, you can get it at barnesandnoble.com, Amazon, and any local booksellers after November 9th or any library too. It'll be available. So definitely follow me. I always have new recipes to share. So Instagram, Facebook, at Mona Dolgov. Thank you, Mona. We appreciate it so much. And thank you for joining us today. For all my listeners, head on over to lizishealthytable.com slash podcast. Enter today's giveaway. Check out all the resources. I'm going to give you lots of links in the show notes to some of the recipes we talked about today. Sign up for that class. We'd love to have you in our Zoom class. And uh, if you love the show, tell a friend about it. Post a review on Apple Stitcher Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table. Happy holidays.